John Parker Wilson, I hope you're having a great afternoon. Welcome into the game in T-Town. I am having a wonderful afternoon, a big football week coming in. How are you? How are y'all doing over there in T-Town? We're great, man. It's just, uh, you know, we're trying to control our excitement. We're trying to pace ourselves. It's only Tuesday, and True. We're, True. We're, we're trying to take the process and apply it to us, but it's a little little harder to do if Nick Saban's not screaming at us like he is those players. Oh, my God. I know. They're getting ready for it. You know, and this week, this week of practices, um, you know, coming off the bye week, it's nice. But, you know, he's probably not having to do a lot of screaming this week and, and any extra motivating or anything like that because these guys know how big of a game this is uh, coming in and what it's going to take and the focus and the energy and the mental energy and everything it's going to take come Saturday night uh, against LSU. So, you know, he's probably doing more teaching and coaching this week just because, uh, you know, all those yelling was done probably last week when those guys knew there was a bye week and no game, and you just got to get back in, lock it in. Today was a big day of practice for them. Tuesday's a big install day where you are really looking at the other team and getting ready for it. So a big day to practice today, another big day tomorrow, um, and all, you know, getting ready for Saturday night, which can be biggest game of the year so far, no question about it, biggest test for Alabama, which, you know, man, I'm, I'm so excited, so ready to look forward to this game, to get down there see what our team is going to be like against one of the best teams in the country. Yeah, and, and certainly we'll talk about it. Dave Aranda, what makes his defense so special? Well, I, I think they're, you know, doing a lot of things, and I haven't watched a ton of tape on them yet. Um, you know, I usually do that tomorrow or Thursday, getting ready for them. So, you know, just going back and looking at all these um, – LSU defense, you know, I think they've got ball players all over the field. They really do. And their number one tackler, Devin White, who's going to be out for the first half, is leading the team in tackles right now. I mean, second place isn't even close. He's got 76. I think the next closest one is 54. So that's a big loss for them in the first half. Uh, but, you know, it's going to take the level of execution for Alabama's offense that they've been able to perform with all year. And I think that's what separated them more than anything is just efficiency and execution against anything. Um, And when you're playing better opponents, that efficiency and execution has to go up. So this is going to be the biggest test for our offense. To be honest with you, you know, that's been the knock on Alabama. If you can even say there's a knock as well, they haven't really played anybody. And I take the other side of that argument is we're making the team um, kind of, adhere to our will, and that's what Coach Saban's always preaching and striving to. So this is it's going to be a big test this week uh, for those guys because playing good athletes, you always get a great game. John Parker, did Brody tell you anything about going to Tiger Stadium and, and something that maybe you passed on to Greg and Greg passes on to AJ? I mean, did anything that they tell you about visiting Tiger Stadium and going down there as a quarterback? You know, not that I recall, but – you know, you just – you anytime you, you're you playing an SEC team on the road, you got to bring an extra level of intensity just because they're going to have the home field advantage. I'm, I'm a big believer in that, especially early in the game when the momentum is still trying to be decided of having that um, extra, you know, 12th man from the home field is, is a big deal. So going down there is – it's, you know, it's a special, special place. You know, LSU, Tennessee – when they're good, um, George is another one. Obviously, Auburn at night is a tough place to play, but this the, the place Saturday night is going to be rocking. And, you know, they they take it seriously. I mean, it's a badge of honor for these LSU fans to make it a rocking place, and especially at night. And then when they get that late kickoff, it adds a, a whole extra level of intensity. So you just got to be ready to bring it on offense. You know, they've moved to more than no huddle, so it, I don't think it really plays into that big of a – of an issue, they're, they're used to it. They're practicing with it all week. They've got speakers throughout the whole field, pumping in music, trying to simulate what it's going to be like. And you just kind of mentally prepare for it during the week. And then Saturday, you just show up and, and play ball. And, and you really don't think about it. You just go out there and, um, you know, try not to let it affect you. And, and the way Alabama has been scoring early, that's the way to get the crowd out of the game is score early, get up on them, and they'll get quiet, just like we've seen all year, Arkansas, Tennessee, these road SEC games. Take the crowd out of it as early as you can. And the way Alabama's been scoring their quick strikes on offense is the way to do it. 
John Parker, we asked Coach O earlier today on our show to describe Tiger Stadium to an outsider. How would you describe it as an opposing player going in that environment? I mean, is it the loudest place you've ever played? Yeah, I mean, it's 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 yeah, probably the, the loudest. You know, and they're the the bench the visitors bench backs right up <laughs> to where the stand starts so you know at bright denny there's that long you know 10 15 yards of uh concrete and hedges that separate the fans from the players down in tiger stadium those guys are right on top of you and they're yelling at you the whole time i mean getting in you you're letting you know what's going on you're, you're trying to sit on the, on the bench making adjustments and and they're yelling at you but you know that's it's something you deal with, and that's that's what makes playing on the road fun. I always love playing on the road and, you know, circling the wagons and us first the world mentality. But you got to be ready for it because if it's a close game in the fourth quarter, that place will be rocking. John Parker, let's go back. And I, I, I've always wanted to ask the story, but uh, let's talk about the, the day or the night uh, that LSU fans got your, your phone number. R- refresh my memory. How did they get your number? <laughs> that's a great question. I have no idea who, the, how they got it, who gave it to them, or what. Um, but I was sitting in class one day. I think it was like a Tuesday, and my phone started getting some some random text messages, random calls, and it wasn't a lot. So you know, I threw my bag or threw my phone in my bag, went to practice. You know, went to meetings, and you know, you're away from your phone for four, five, six hours. So didn't even think about it. And then I come back to my locker. You know, I've just showered up, getting ready to go home looking at the phone on the way to my car, and it's, I mean, blowing up. And it's just you can't delete the text messages fast enough before the next one's loaded up because they're they're so backed up and phone calls and voice messages. So I'm like, you know, this is there's definitely something up. They had done it earlier in the year, the same thing to Tebow. They did it to No Sean Moreno where they get their uh, cell phones and just trying to mess with whoever's on the, on the opposing team. So I guess that was the target that week. They got it. Um, you know, and then it was kind of nice because then I could just turn my phone off for the rest of the week, didn't have to worry about it. And then, um, you know, after the week, I had to obviously change my cell phone number, but it was probably for the best. And it was good because I just didn't have to worry about it anymore. My dad helped me change my cell phone number um, after the game. And, uh, you know, I kind of let them let them know what happened. We scored, I think, scored the first touchdown in their student section. So, you know, I had a I had to give them peace of my mind right there when it happened. Unfortunately, I got 15 yard penalty, so I'll learn my lesson pretty quickly. But, what what Coach you know, Saban what, say to his quarterback when, when you do that? I mean, there's got to be a there's got to be something he said to you. Because see, it wasn't premeditated at all. Those guys that did it earlier in the year, which you know is obviously not an excuse, but um, I quarterback sneak it, which didn't happen a lot. Me running and rushing touchdown. I quarterback sneak it, the, the student section's right there, so it just happened. Uh, I went over the bench. You know, feeling terrible. I mean, awful because, like, you know, now we're kicking off 15 yards deep. They get the ball on the 50 yard line, scoring like two plays later. So, boom, you know, we're up 7 nothing. Now it's tied 7 7. So, it, it, he, he had some things to say at halftime to the team about, you know, staying focused. We just got back to work. We didn't, you know, it was it was a mistake. So, luckily, he was worried about the defense at the time. And, and you know, still to say, we've never talked about it. So, I'm sure one day we'll re- we'll address the issue, but he uh, he's none too pleased to say the least. Hey, it, it was uh, listen for all of us Alabama fans. We were going yes, 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 because uh, we 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 enjoy those moments. I mean, e- even though it's, and it's it's only it's only a good story now that we won the game. If we lost the game, completely different. So, oh, it would have been. Uh, it would have been. <laughs> it had been really bad, but you know, going down that game, we ended up taking them over time. Rashad Johnson had his third interception in overtime. So we get the ball on the on the twenty five yard line. All we have to do is kick a field goal. Coach Davis said, Nope, let's get let's throw to Julio. Let's get this game over with. Throw a little slant and go to Julio, got it down to the one yard line. We ran it in two plays later to win the West. So it turned out to be okay. It turned out to be really good, actually. Hey, it, no doubt, no doubt. And it got something started here very special in Tuscaloosa. Uh, allowing the championships to to develop. We're talking to John Parker Wilson, former quarterback at the University of Alabama. John Parker, let, let's go to LSU j- just for a couple of minutes. Uh, what do you see in their quarterback, uh, Joe Burrow? You know, he's come in and, and he's done a pretty good job of not turning the ball over, 
of being that, you know, game manager guy and getting it done. I think he's done a pretty good job. They're, you know, leading one of the top teams in the country right now in turnover margin. So they're not turning the ball over a lot. Their defense is creating a lot of turnovers. He's spreading the ball around. He, you know, has a lot of attempts per game to be honest. So they're putting a lot on his shoulders. Um, and, you know, we've said it all year. It's going to be another test for our secondary. And those guys have been stepping up each each and every game with injuries, with everything else. Um, and if you're Alabama, what you're trying to do is get pressure on the quarterback. You're trying to get back there, disrupt him, make him uncomfortable. Just like our last game against Tennessee, we were able to get back there to Garantano. You know, you never want to hurt a guy, but it was a clean hit on Matt Wilson, take him out of the game, and that's, that's making an opposing quarterback uncomfortable is getting back there and um, getting in the backfield. So Alabama, Quinn Williams, Christian Miller, Anthony Jennings, those guys got to do it again this week. Get in the backfield, be disruptive. Lead the SEC in sacks, 26. As opposing quarterback, do you know those numbers going into the game? Because we heard Joe talking about it yesterday. He goes, I'm not scared of them or something. I'm not afraid of coming out there. And certainly you want your quarterback to say that, but you've got to at least take note uh, that these guys will hit a quarterback and they love doing it. Yeah, there's no doubt. I mean, look, guys like Quentin Williams, as a quarterback, you know where, where they're at at all times. Matt Wilson's in there. Dylan Moses, man, he's making some plays too. And then, oh, by the way, you got to look out for Xavier McKinney because he's turned out to be an extremely good blitzer. He gets it. He understands where it holds to go through, where's the weakness in the defense. Um, so you you got to keep your head on the swivel. And I really like Tosh is doing a good job of knowing when to dial up the blitzes, when not to. And, he you know, as his he's become a better play caller, I think our defense has gotten better and better all year. John Parker, any indication that Tua is going to have problems in Tiger Stadium? I mean, we, we've asked that question a couple of calls today. Nick Saban pretty addressed it yesterday of not thinking. I mean, this guy's not rattled. I mean, he's a pretty cool, calm, collective guy. Uh, any indication that Tiger Stadium is going to throw him some some challenges? No, not a bit. I mean, he I think he's had the biggest test of that you could basically ever have as a quarterback, and that's coming in at halftime down in the national championship game. And you know, Tiger Stadium is a different place, and it's going to be all LSU fans. When it's the national championship, you know, it was they say it half and half, but there's a lot of Georgia fans there. He's he's tested. He's been there. He's done that. We're late in the season now. Um, so you don't, you don't think you don't think anything about it if you do. You just go out there, play your game, stick to your reads, and, and keep doing what you're doing. I think if anything, it's not him getting rattled. It's that other defense has has to be scared for this Alabama offense coming to town. John Parker Wilson, color analyst at the University of Alabama, former quarterback, presented by Tuscaloosa Toyota. John Parker, take a minute and talk about Scott Peoples, the amazing staff on Scott Boulevard at Tuscaloosa Toyota. Yeah, amazing staff, and they're getting it done week in a week playing the football team. But, man, how about those deals and all the specials they've got going on right now towards the end of the year that you talked about? I mean, you're getting – it's pretty crazy to think about the possibilities that they have to be able to get you in the car. And, you know, we talk about it all every week, all the different specials they have going on, one price, one place, three-day return policy, no commission sales staff. They're just trying to get you the best car, and I love the staff. I love the people that they're dealing with. There's, you know, Scott's hired an amazing staff from the service department to the sales staff. Um, so go check them out at Scotland Boulevard, TuscaloosaToyota.com. Tell them I sent you. And, um, man, you know, I'm still driving a Toyota 4Runner, about to get my wife and probably a 4Runner or, or pick her out a new car. So um, we're huge fans. We're customers also. I think it's the best place to buy a car. We are Alabama's number one volume Toyota certified dealer. It's simple, 3325 Scottle Boulevard and online at TuscaloosaToyota.com. John Parker drives the 4Runner. I drive the Tundra and so many things to choose from on Scottle Boulevard. John Parker, have a great trip to Baton Rouge. I'll see you inside the stadium on Saturday. Have a great day, man. Can't, can't wait to talk to you next week. Hopefully we're talking about a win, man. Roll Tide.